Welcome to the Wish I'd Known Then podcast, where we focus on how authors found success, looking at strategies that have taken them to the top of the bestseller charts, as well as what they've learned from their mistakes. Because being an indie author is more than knowing the latest marketing trend. It's about being innovative and creative and learning from your mistakes. Welcome to the Wish I'd Known Then podcast. I'm Sarah Rosette. And I'm Jamie Albright. And this week on the show, we have Jenna Lee. Yes, we do. It's really good, y'all. She's a uh, she has a biz, uh, company called Daring Press, and she uh, it's PA work or virtual, virtual assistant. assistant work. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So it's, it's really, really good. It was a really good podcast. Yeah, yeah. Um, we talk about like how to know when it's time to outsource and how to mm-hmm. find people and like, do you need an NDA? Things like that. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. We just talked about and she's also an author so she has a little bit of a different Mm -hmm. perspective on Mm -hmm. that so Mm -hmm. she comes from being an author and uh talked about how she sees people being successful and the Mm -hmm. mistakes that they make and what they're doing and that maybe they feel like they should but they don't have to yeah so right so that is good yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. so should we do our supporters real quick yes We we have a new supporter this week yes and it do you want to read it out jamie you want me to you go ahead because okay. I don't have it pulled up. <laughs> okay. <All right. laughs> so we have M, we have MJ Krogan with a heart. So yes. Thank you, MJ. We appreciate thank it. Thank you, MJ. Yeah. And thank you to everyone who supported us. We're working on a new, uh, we're working on a supporters thing that we're going to yeah. do for you guys. So uh, we'll probably share that next week. And, yeah. and um my grandson is in the background screaming, so sorry. Um, <laughs> it's not the dog, it's the kid. Uh, but it's anyway, something. it's always something. But yeah. yeah, so we appreciate our subscribers. So what's been going on with you? You've got kind of big news, don't you? Uh, well, I finished the store. It is launched. Woo! 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 Yay! Yep. So I was very happy to get it all done. It's basically mm-hmm. like, I don't know if you heard uh Joanna Penn talking about her store. She did a podcast when she finished it and she talked about how it was a mm-hmm. minimal viable store, basically like you mm-hmm, get mm-hmm. up because it's you know it's endless. You could spend yeah a there long no, time. there there aren't any dancing bears no when you make a purchase or anything. Okay. No 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 no, right. no 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 we're done. <laughs> we're done with that. <laughs> it's very basic. <laughs> Yeah, but I so we might actually do a podcast about this later. Like just just the choices you have to make when you're thinking about what mm-hmm. you want to do. Um, so I got everything up and running, and then I sent it to mm-hmm. my newsletter list. I was like, "Hey, I have a store now," and I didn't mm-hmm. like really spotlight it. I just put it in the newsletter, and I said, "Here's a 15 percent off coupon because I took Morgana Best class, and she said one way to draw people to your store is to offer a discount." You give them an offer. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's and a great so, idea. Yeah. So it's super easy. You can go in and you can do, you know, limited time, whatever you want. So I did a 15% discount for new customers. Send it to my email, not one order. So I just thought oh I'd God. share that because, you know, sometimes things go well and sometimes they don't. I didn't see that go with that one. <laughs> So I think next time, I think what I need to do is be very specific and say, hey, yeah. you know, like link it to, we had Zara Keen on a long time ago on the podcast and mm-hmm. she talked about how she would say, hey, it's St. Patrick's Day. I'm having a St. Patrick's Day mm-hmm. sale, you know, like link yeah. it to yeah. an event or to like a spotlight, like one product, because I did have success right. in the past. Like I did the calendar mm-hmm. around Christmas yeah. and people mm-hmm. went to the, I just had a buy button. And so people will go there. But it's yeah. just, I thought that was funny. At first I was like, oh, <laughs> do I want to talk about this? I thought, yeah, I think I need to talk about this. <laughs> because, you know. We're real, y'all. We're yeah. real. <laughs> yeah. So super successful kickoff to the store. There we go. <laughs> Knocking so, down the door. Yeah. Not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so that, so I got that launched and I, I do feel good about getting it done because now it's set up yeah, and I totally I understand. Yeah. Totally understand why people use Shopify. It's mm-hmm. once you get everything in there, it's really cool mm-hmm. how it's all linked together. You can tag products. Mm-hmm. You can say these are all my print books, mm-hmm. or these are all my books in a series, and then you can mm-hmm. sort and display them according to your tags. And so mm-hmm. it's super easy once you get everything in there to mm-hmm. show them in different ways. 
So it's really cool. I like the interface. That's cool. Yeah. 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 That's good. Yeah. That's so good. that's like my big news this week. What okay. about you? Yeah. Well, I don't really, have, you know, I don't have any big news, but I will say that I am down the George the Third and and Queen Charlotte hole. Uh, I've watched Bridget, uh, you get up? Netflix. <laughs> huh? Did you get up at like super early to watch it live? No, I just, no, I just, oh no, not the coronation. I know I'm going to offend people. I don't care about the coronation. Oh, Bridgerton. No. Bridgerton. Okay. Yeah, I got the it. Queen now. Charlotte show of Bridgerton. Okay. I got uh, it. So that, that, that little series, you know, the whole se- Bridgerton series is based off a set, set of books yes. that um, were some of my favorites. But this story is something that Shonda Rhimes and uh, the author of the books, whose name has completely left me right now, uh, they worked on together. And yeah, we'll get it for you. I'll and um, but I what I binged it. I mean, like I was just going to watch one or two and then I just couldn't stop. It's, it's so good. And it's, it's, it's a different sort of love story. And I was thinking about it as it was kind of concluding, like there is a black moment, but the black moment is kind of in the, in the middle. And then the rest of like the rest of the show is the the two of them overcoming their mutual enemy, but it's not an enemy. It's just oh, this thing that's a, yeah, it it's a beautiful love story. Like I I cried. I Aww. cried at the end. It was just it was really, really good and done okay. really well. And um they make some points that, you know, I mean they his storyline is a little lazy, in my opinion. It's a little bit of a retelling of what's already happened, but it's from his perspective. Mm-hmm. But it's also important. So, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. it's kind of, but it was, it was great. And then afterwards I had to, you know, find out how much of that was made up because they say it's fiction, uh-huh. but, and how much was true and yeah, so I'm it's still a, like it's a new limited series or something because mm-hmm. I'm totally I don't six, know six about episodes. It. Yeah, oh, okay. so it's it's like a prequel to Bridgerton. Oh, okay, in Bridgerton, the first two seasons, um, Queen Charlotte plays a very prominent role where she does not play that prominent role in the books okay. at all. I mean, she doesn't even have a role, I don't think. Um, but in the series, she plays a very prominent role. And so we get her okay in George the Third's love story in uh-huh. this. Uh, it's and okay, you know the so costumes oh, yeah. and everything Just for Bridgerton gorgeous, are so beautiful. Yeah. 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 So anyway, that's where I'm at. Well, that's, that's it. great. Yeah. I got that. That's cool. Else. And it shows you yeah. like. There's always more story, you know, it's yeah, just so interesting. There's always more story. Yeah. Yeah. And there's oh. different ways to tell them. Yeah. Yes. I looked it up. Yeah. Julia Quinn. Is that the author? Yes. Yeah, gosh. Okay, I can't go. believe I forgot that. It's okay. Sorry, Julia Quinn. <laughs> I am a fan. I just <laughs> have very few brain cells left. I'm taking my lines main. Hopefully my supplements, hopefully <laughs> I'll get a few of those back. Yes, um, that's true. But we should get on with the episode. Yes. And we, and I, and, uh, and we should also mention that we have another episode about virtual assistants with Adriel that we did a long yes, time ago. Do. So I'll mm-hmm. put that in the show notes. And so yeah. that will be two different um, perspectives and feedback and ideas on how to find mm-hmm. virtual assistants. Mm-hmm. So we'll yeah. put that in there. Yeah. And, and I, I guess, should also mention that I do consulting because yeah. Sarah gets on me because I don't yes. mention it, but I do. And I've had, I've had this week, I've had a couple of great calls. Um, okay. Really, I think we really got a lot of good stuff done, and I love them, and they seem to love them. So, um, and if you listen to the podcast, you get a twenty five dollar discount. So, let me know when if you reach out to me. Just let me know you heard it on the podcast. All right, sounds good. Okay, okay. All well, right. here is cool. Jenna. All right. Well, today we're excited to have Jenna Lee with us. Hi, Jenna. How are you? I'm good. How are you? We're great. It's uh, morning where you are and after late afternoon where we are. <laughs> yeah, isn't it awesome that we could connect all, like, all around the world? I love it. It's, it's amazing. amazing. It is amazing. We take it for granted now. So 
but it is great. And we're excited to talk to you about uh, virtual assistants and helping authors. And so let me read your bio and we'll get into that. Uh, the Daring Press is a virtual assistant support agency for authors who are ready to take their author business to the next level with more ease, growth, and time. Those are three things we all want. <laughs> yes. So tell us, how did you get into writing and the genre you write in? Yeah, so yeah, I'm an author as well, in case people didn't know. I run <laughs> the Daring Press and I'm also, I started off as an author, so that's sort of what led to the Daring Press, which we'll talk about later. But um, yeah, how I got into writing. So it was five, I think it's five or six years ago, 28. It was like mm. February, 2018. Do the math, whatever mm. that, whatever that equals. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but, um, that was when I first, um, launched my very first book, which was a reverse harem paranormal romance. And it was sort of the time where reverse harem was like pretty new and it was quite mm -hmm. a big hit. And it was quite like, it was quite those days where you put something up and like I had quite a big success when I put it out there and it was easy and it was promotion was very much around, <laughs> you know, your Facebook groups and your Facebook communities. And it was, right. yeah, a really, really great success. So that was like my very first book that I put out there and like going back of how I got into that writing, I me and my bestie, she's sort of like my book bestie. So basically we read mm -hmm. a lot of books together mm -hmm. and talk about them yep. and, you know, you know how it goes. And yep. we were talking about, I'm like, oh, I've got this book idea and about this and that and was talking to her about it. And she's just like the best, bestest friend in terms of like supporting me of like, oh, yeah, motivator, mm -hmm. let's do it, do it. What are you waiting for? I'm like, oh, really? Can I do this? Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't know that. And yeah, that was sort of the motivation that kicked me off. And then, yeah, started writing that book and then put it out in yeah February 2018. And then, yeah, haven't really looked back from that. There's been a few yeah hurdles along the writing mm -hmm. journey mm -hmm. with things changing, a bit of author burnout, writer burnout, and yeah, a few obstacles, but here we are. Mm -hmm. That was great. Mm -hmm. And so you have sort of a unique perspective because you're an author. A lot of virtual assistants are only virtual assistants. But um, so tell us how you um, got into working as a virtual assistant with other authors. Yeah. So this was before I started being an author. I worked with a couple of authors in terms of um, being a virtual assistant, so helping them out. People call them PAs in the author mm -hmm, world, mm -hmm, but they're mm -hmm. VAs. It, there's mm -hmm. just, that's always around that. But if you don't know what I'm talking about, yeah, virtual assistant, personal assistant, yeah, same okay. thing. But, yeah, doing it virtually, so that's always why the VA makes a bit more sense. But, um, yeah, I was working with a couple of authors doing, yeah, social media management and that type of thing before I became an author, and then as I became an author, I was still working as a virtual assistant. And what um, I've found over the years is sort of a bit of a gap in the industry in terms of when people, um, authors are looking for support, there is um, a lot of people that can do tasks, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. We always want someone mm -hmm. that can tick off the tasks and help us with that. But what was sort of missing that I found, and I've been working in the online space with coaches, creatives, authors mm -hmm. over the past six, seven years, and what is was really missing is that strategic side of things and thinking of other ways to market your books. So, mm -hmm. you know, we can very well bring somebody into our team and, um, you know, delegate certain tasks like, okay, can you create these type of posts? But you got to you got to be a specific in terms of okay, I want this type of post and a bit of hand holding in mm -hmm. that sense. And what I found was there's a bit of a gap of like um, virtual assistants that can come in and be a bit more of that strategic thinking side of things that can really help you of like oh you know I saw this happening um, for another author. How about we try doing this type of thing? Um, you know whether it might be, you know, a TikTok thing, whether it might be Goodreads, whether it might be email marketing, like there's so many different ways that you can market your book, right? Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, actually thinking outside of the box and thinking of new strategic ways and even looking at book launches and just that higher level of support to really help you grow further. And I, yeah, I just felt like there was a bit of a gap there and I was like, okay, 
I think the only way to feel this is to create something and I'm that type of personality. It's like, okay, if I can't see it there, I've got to do something about that, you know? Yeah. That's great. That's initiative and I love it. Have you done (laughs) your strengths? Do you know what they are? Yeah, I have. Yeah. And I've talked to Becca on my podcast as well. She's amazing. I I absolutely love it. But Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm like an activator. I think I was number one. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. and I'm like motivator achiever yeah. strategic like I've got all and I'm like oh I just it gets me and I'm like oh this makes sense now <laughs> I think everyone has that reaction when you yeah. get your strengths it's like exactly. oh it's like somebody a, a gets me light, light bulb goes yeah. on yeah it does yeah. well what do you wish authors knew about your field oh it's not scary like it's mm-hmm. not scary in terms of outsourcing. Like I think people and authors mm-hmm. get this thing and I like I get like this sometimes too still. Like even sometimes I hold on to things and bottleneck things and I'm like, oh, no, mm-hmm. I'll just do it myself. It's easier. But I think when we actually, you know, let go of that and let somebody else into our author business, mm-hmm. it can really help you grow. Like you're getting an extra set of an extra mind, an extra brain to really (laughs) help you come up with new creative ways to, to grow your author business. And it's not scary. And yeah, I think that's sort of what I would tell authors. And there is a few steps of like finding the right team member. I think that's a huge thing Mm -hmm. as well, which maybe we can talk about a bit more, but yeah. Yeah. Why don't we delve into that? Like if somebody's interested in finding somebody to help them, how would you advise them to go about finding someone. Yeah. Yeah. So like first step, I would get super clear on what you want support with. Like there's so many things that you can get support with, but the best way to do this is to like write out a list literally of like, okay, what am I doing now in my author business? Like what are the tasks that I'm doing? And literally the first, like just doing a big brain dump of like all the things that you're doing in your author business, whether it's writing up a newsletter once a week, once a fortnight, whatever, however Mm -hmm. often that you do it whether it's posting this many times on social media, whether it's your TikTok, whether it's your Facebook group management, whether it is more strategic side of things of like thinking about Mm -hmm. a book launch plan, you know, Mm -hmm. literally writing out all the things that you're doing in relation to your author business. And then the next step is looking at all of them and being like, okay, what do I love doing out of this list? Like what do I want to keep doing? Because there'll be Mm -hmm. things in there And this is like going back to your strengths as well and looking at, okay, what type of things light me up when I do it? Is it like, because I personally, like I love creating TikToks with like video and most people would hate doing this, but Mm -hmm. I actually love it. And I get into this character and I have fun with it. So I'm like, I can't outsource that because I feel good doing it. And that feels really good to me creating that content and that creative side. So that would be one way to look at it and look at, okay, yeah, which tasks do I really love doing and what's tasks that are like that you really dislike doing, you put off Mm -hmm. those ones that are like stay on your to-do list and it's like, oh, yeah, tomorrow because it's too hard and you're just not, (laughs) you're not feeling it. So that's when you're going to come down to your list of, okay, these are the tasks that I really need to outsource and bring someone into the team that is good at that side of things. Mm -hmm. You know, mm-hmm. we're not we're not going to be good at everything because this is a business, right? And we're not going to be good right. at right. all the different steps and things that it takes. We're not all accountants. We're not all creatives. We're not, well, we are creative. Writers are creatives, but there's certain levels of, you know, graphic design and then like creative mm-hmm. writing, like completely mm-hmm. different. So, yeah, that is like the next sort of step. And then the next step after that is obviously doing up like a bit of a, um list of what do you call it like a job application in terms like Mm -hmm. putting out a google form or something like that where you can put out okay these are the tasks that I need support with this is the type of person that I'm looking for so really important to be like okay this is a personality or strengths strengths are really great to look at in terms Mm -hmm. of when you're hiring Mm -hmm. and like looking at your strengths and it's like okay what other strengths would be really beneficial to bring into my team that are going to fill these gaps that I can't necessarily do or I'm not, yeah, Mm -hmm. not in my skill set. So, yeah, doing up a bit of an application based on those things, who you're looking for, what type of tasks, 
And then it's always good to jump on Zoom calls, like, you know, put that out there. There's Facebook groups, there's different things, putting it on your own social media, because you might find somebody that has been following your work and has that skill set. So putting it out there. Yeah. And then doing like a bit of a um, video interview just to get to know the person. I think a lot of people miss that step of, and it's not scary getting on a Zoom. I think it's more being able to really read that body language, read um, mm-hmm. you know how you guys get along because it's huge. You're bringing somebody into your team. You really want to make sure it's the right fit for you in mm-hmm. terms of skill set, personality, communication. Like there's a lot of things that go into it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And when you say it's it's a little bit of trial and error too sometimes because you yeah. don't really know until you start working with someone. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And like the first month, I always say this to our clients, like the first month's going to be a bit rocky in terms of like, this is going to be your trial period of like, right. you know, you're setting stuff up, you're bringing someone into the team, your processes and systems, you got to be making sure that you've got things set up that are going to help you guys kick off on the right foot, not just bring someone in and be like, oh, here, here is it, mm-hmm, fix mm-hmm. this, do this. You've got to actually yeah. have a bit, yeah, your mm-hmm. processes and systems in place so that you can bring them on and it's not all a bit confusing and you're going to be, yeah, the first couple of weeks are going to be, you know, setting up your backend stuff, setting up your passwords. Like there's a few processes that Mm -hmm. go into Mm -hmm. it and then you're going to get really get a feel for how you guys work together, how you're going to communicate, what apps you're going to use. Yeah, there's a few different steps and then you're going to get a feel for yeah, is this working after that initial setup and now mm-hmm. the person is doing the task? Are they doing a good job? And just checking in with them right. around that. Yeah. 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 I think there's a whole this um, phase. Like for me, I was used to doing everything myself. And then when I asked some people to help me out, it's like the last like year and a half, probably I've been slowly transitioning a lot of my stuff, like to Dropbox mm-hmm. and Google Drive and giving people access because before I had everything, you know, where I could find it, but you have to have a way to share it with people and make Mm -hmm. it where it's easy for them to find. So that's, that can, for me, it took a while to figure out how I wanted to arrange everything so we could all find it, you know, because it worked in my brain. It made total sense to me, (laughs) but maybe not other people. So yeah, that's a, 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 part of that learning curve and it can make it seem like it's taking a long time but I think it's smart to like give it a little time before you're like oh this just didn't work Mm -hmm. yeah exactly yeah 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 Yeah. well is there um what do you wish is there anything you wish that you'd known about indie publishing or working with authors from the PA VA side um I guess just industry knowledge like it's always really important to know yeah, to know the industry and to know what's mm-hmm. happening and to really understand it. Because, you know, when you do bring someone into your team, you really want that person to know the book world. You really want them to understand how it works because it's its own little community. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's massive. Like you want to really make sure that the person understands that and really gets gets what their skill set is and really mm-hmm. isn't. That's like their niche area and their yeah expertise, I think. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That's smart. Yeah. 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 That is smart. What do you see authors doing that they do because they think they have to, but they're not producing results? Oh, it's a whole should thing, isn't it? Like, oh, I should yeah, be doing this. Is. And we see mm-hmm. a million posts in the 20 books to 50K, which is so inspiring. And I love mm-hmm. them. But sometimes it's overwhelming. Like, sometimes mm-hmm. it's like, mm-hmm. oh, so you're telling me. I've got to make 50 TikToks in a day or, (laughs) you know, you're telling me that I've got to Mm -hmm. now do my email newsletter or I should be on YouTube now or I should be on, um, you know, Goodreads or writing this or doing that. Like you can get overwhelmed and I think it's very much looking at it's always good to grow and develop but really tapping into focusing on one thing at a time and then feeling Mm -hmm. into does this feel good is this Mm -hmm. feeling like it's going to be the right thing for me? Because energetically, like if TikTok is not your thing, you're going to put that out there and it's not going to come back. It's not going to work. It's just Mm -hmm. not your thing. 
and that's okay. Like how cool is it that we've got a million different paths to success, you Mm -hmm. know, and I think it's Mm -hmm. focusing not on the million things you've got to do or you should be doing, but focusing on one thing at a time and finding your your success pillar, Mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Have you seen any, or what are the things you've seen that have been kind of unusual? I mean, we've all heard about TikTok and we all know about like ads and stuff, but are there any authors that have had success in like a surprising way that you thought, oh, that's a, that's great. Not many people are into this. Yeah, I guess it's, um, it's like you, I'm going down like the YouTube trail right now. And I think mm-hmm. it's a new, mm-hmm. yeah. And I'm learning, like I'm nerding out about learning about a lot of YouTube stuff at the minute. And I'm, it's been around for so long, but we don't utilize, like we utilize it in an educational base. Like you'll see mm-hmm. a lot, you yeah. know, you go on YouTube to learn about, you know, how to write a book or like, you mm-hmm. know, how to market a book and like that type of thing. But the YouTube in terms of for an author, like the YouTube shorts are going to be a huge mm. thing. And I think it's, right. yeah, I think it's about like looking at what, yeah, what people are succeeding in and like, okay, can I make that work? Or is that, right. yeah, is that something and a path that I want to go down? And even something I'm looking into and was surprised at is Goodreads. Like I do, you know, when you think, Oh, Goodreads, mm-hmm. it's just a place that I don't even manage it. People just mm-hmm. go on there and want to read this book. But I did see um, somebody talked about, I can't remember who it was. Might have been something around Inca's Con or something like that. It was probably and Alessandra. I, yeah, I think somebody yeah. said, one of our clients was talking about it and he had success. I think he was a thriller author and he had success with Goodreads. And I was like, really? Like, I didn't even know that that was a thing. <laughs> and he said, yeah, Inca's con, he learned um, a few things mm-hmm. from that. So that surprised me recently. I'm like, oh, I did not even know all this stuff you could mm-hmm. do with Goodreads. Like that. Yeah. yeah. There, yeah. Um, Alessandra Torres talks about, she has a webinar and she talks about that there are five things you can do on Goodreads to launch your book and only one of them costs money. The rest yeah. are free. Yeah, that's surprising. Yes. I'm like, I didn't even look at that. Like, you know, yeah, yeah, she. I know. I think we've all like Goodreads kind of got a bad reputation among authors. It's like, don't go there. It's a scary place, you know. But there are some ways you can use it where you don't have to be in the comments and everything. Like the giveaways yeah. and things can work really well. And yeah. like just listing and, your book and gets it in front of people, which is, you know, mm-hmm. great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's always good trying new things and seeing if it does, yeah. if it's that success pillar that works for you, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So are you, um, are you taking your TikTok content and posting it in YouTube shorts? Yeah. Yeah. So that's okay. what I'm trialing at the minute. Um, yeah. Using my TikTok. Cause I'm a bit weird about the whole TikTok thing right now. And who knows what's happened. I think it's just left it to, I don't know. I think it's, I think it's going to be fine, but it's always good looking at new ways Mm -hmm, to market mm -hmm. and reach new readers and yeah I'm repurposing the TikTok into my reels like taking off the um, watermark Mm -hmm. which you can do in those apps um, and then using it on YouTube shorts and just trialing it and seeing how it goes yeah Yeah. that's great yeah Yeah. that's cool Mm -hmm. well so if an author is thinking they might want to outsource um, what would be some signs or how would an author know that it's a good time to start looking into this because like you could do it too early and sometimes you can wait too late right yeah and there's never a happy medium like, like, <laughs> you're either it. you're yeah. either sitting around with really not very much to do or you're drowning that's yeah too- yeah. yeah yeah there's yeah. like two there's only two levels no nah, but there is a point where I think people authors always get to that overwhelmed stage and they're like oh I'm doing too much or they just get to a point of that near burnout and they're like, I need mm-hmm. some help. So ways to sort of manage it, like we don't want to get to that stage because then when you do bring on someone, somebody and you're onboarding, sometimes they're you're in this stage of like you're overwhelmed, you you don't mm-hmm. even have the headspace to onboard someone and that's where it can you can run yeah. across a few mistakes and like not finding the right person, the right fit for you, which, you know, when you are bringing somebody on yeah. and then you have to get somebody else, like it's a huge thing mm-hmm. and it's a bit of a right. time. Yeah. So making sure that just looking out for signs before then and checking, it's all about checking in with yourself. I think, mm-hmm. you know, make it a bit of a, 
ritual in your, um, you know, maybe it's monthly or, you know, checking in with yourself and just asking a few questions like, you know, how am I doing in terms of my author business? Is it, you know, Mm -hmm. am am I at that stage where I do need support? Am I Mm -hmm. nearly on the brink of that overwhelm? Like what's my days looking like? Am I missing things that I, you know, want to be doing or, you know, just really asking yourself those hard questions and you're going to mm-hmm. probably yeah work out when is that right time mm-hmm. and trying to do it beforehand but it's right. easy saying that but that would be <laughs> that would be my <laughs> advice yeah well because just because you can do it whatever that task is doesn't mean you should be doing it like yeah. your your time could be better spent doing something else or that brain, that energy that you're putting, that mental energy you're putting mm-hmm. into that could be spent doing something else that's, that is more in line with, as you said earlier, the things that give you energy that make you, that you like to do. So, because yeah. I think that's where a lot of people, myself included, kind of stumble like, well, I can do that. Like, mm-hmm. why would I pay somebody to do that? I can do that. And Sarah's so good because we'll we'll think of something we want to do on the podcast and she'll say, I'll just call Adriel. And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah let's do that. Because I don't think about it because I'm thinking, oh, we could, you know, we can do yeah. that. And, and maybe because I'm cheap, but I don't think that's <laughs> it because I don't really mind spending money. But um, <laughs> I just don't think about it. You know, I just yeah. think I can do it. I may as well just do it. But yeah, think, and that's a, that's yeah. a huge thing. Like we all do that, mm-hmm. and it's like, oh yeah, it's easier if I do it. But the mm-hmm. headspace that it takes to for you to actually do it, like yeah. yeah, you can physically do it, but is it bringing you joy? Is it bringing mm-hmm. you that happiness? Like you know, when you write, like that's a re- like we started this to write, and that's always mm-hmm. the number one thing. And when you are doing all this other stuff, and missing time away from your craft and what you actually love doing that's Mm -hmm. some signs of like oh okay I definitely want to get back to that writing more and have a bit more of a balance like you're all you're gonna have to do other stuff to grow your author business Mm -hmm. like there's Mm -hmm. you can't just write like bit of Mm -hmm. honesty there but (laughs) you can you can get that support to help you with other other areas that you don't like doing right. yeah yeah right and yeah. if it takes you away from family too like if you're writing during the day and then you're up until 10 o'clock at night doing admin things then you you've missed time with your family with your spouse mm-hmm. with your favorite netflix show i mean you whatever <laughs> that, you know it's just something separate from your author business and it's so hard for us to separate anyway because we work at home and the thing is right here and my computer's always here and and so I, but I think it's important to separate um you know from the business from what we're doing and take some time for ourselves but if we yeah. if we don't know how to give that away give some of that away we we don't do that yeah balance balance we always say yeah we need more balance and yeah it is hard when you're working from home and I've had to you know when I because I've got my own I'm grateful that I've got my own office here but I have to shut the door at night because it's so tempting oh I'll just go send Mm -hmm. that or I'll Mm -hmm. just go do that and I think they don't tell like when you do come into um this line of work we think that oh yeah I'm just going to write all the time like that's that's what I'm doing I'm Mm going to be writing but we forget the author business side. Like it's a business. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It is a business. Like that's a huge, mm-hmm. you know, when you're coming into this, you've got to know that you're running a business as well. You're wearing mm-hmm. multiple different hats. Mm-hmm. You're a writer by yeah. day. You're a marketer. You're, mm-hmm. co- you know, content creator. You are like the accountant, bookkeeper. Like yeah. you're the running. The list is like this. endless, right? I it mean, is. I yes. saw somebody so. one time, they created a post of everything they did. And I was like, yeah, no wonder we're exhausted and overwhelmed because yes. you are doing all these little things. Mm-hmm. So I was going to add on the, like, when you're trying to figure out what you want to outsource that things we were talking about, like, what do you do? What do you love? Also, like, what are things that only you can do? Because they're like, I did that one time and I was like, oh, like these things I can, you know, have somebody else do. But like the writing of the books, 
I need to do that, you know? Mm -hmm. And like, there's certain things like cover design that like, I want to be involved in, like to make sure that it it goes the way I want it to. But like, once it's at a certain stage, I'm getting better at handing things off. I'm still not great, Mm -hmm. but um, yeah, I think that like, we have to think about that too, is like, there are certain things that we have to do. And there are certain things that, you know, somebody else, I mean, Adriel can do spreadsheets way better than I can. So anything to do with spreadsheet, I get rid of that. She makes our head hurt. Yeah, yeah I do. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Well, so you, oh, go ahead, Sarah. No, you go. We talked about earlier how to find the right team member, but then once you find people, how do you go about choosing them and building a team? to support you do you do you like is there you have job description but then how do you know that person is going to be right for that job or right for you with you you know yeah and that comes back to like I think you, you have to be you have to meet them on a zoom call you have to get to know them mm-hmm. and do up some questions that are going to really provoke them and challenge them in the way of like knowing if if that is going to be the right fit for you so Mm -hmm. you know it might be asking a a um, question in terms of okay if I was launching a book and I needed you to create graphics for it um you know when it launches, what type of, gra- like, what type of graphics would mm-hmm. you create? Or like just mm-hmm. asking those type mm-hmm. of thought provoking mm-hmm. questions that are really going to give you a clear um, picture of, okay, this person knows what they're doing or they get it. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, just asking, I think that's going to be a huge thing. And don't be afraid to get on a Zoom. Like sometimes we don't want to be <laughs> seen on a Zoom or we're just mm-hmm. like, you know, writers, we're like in our comfy clothes and we're just, you know, that type of thing. But I do think that's an important step because you do get a feel for someone via email and talking, but there's just something more about jumping on a Zoom and being able to see the person and really get that further feel for Mm -hmm. who they are, their personality, um, getting to know maybe a little, you know, asking a question around, okay, what do you um, do outside of work? That What's your passions? And you're really going to find, you know, there might be connection points that you both um, love to, I don't know, I'm trying to think of something yeah. outside of yeah. <laughs> reading yeah. or chocolate, yeah. coffee, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to get a feel for their personality. You really want to get a feel for their skill set, making sure that they do tick those boxes of what you're putting mm-hmm. out there with those okay. questions. Um and you can even do, I have seen this in the past where some authors will ask for, you know, a sample, like they might put a task out there of like, okay, can you create me a graphic? Can you create, can you write up in um, a paragraph for an E? Like don't do a huge task where people are going to be like, that's, that's a lot, <laughs> but just a little taste of like, if it's graphic, if it's graphic related, get them to create a graphic for you so you can see, yeah. see the skill set. Mm-hmm. If it's about newsletter writing, get them to write maybe the introduction of the newsletter or a section of it or something like that. Um, That way you're really going to get a feel for making sure that they do have the skills that you really need to feel. Yeah. So I think this would be a good point to talk about like feedback. Like if somebody does something and it comes back to you and it's okay, but it's not quite right. Give us some tips on how to like, you know, like we all know, like say something nice before you say something (laughs) critical, (laughs) can you expand on that? And like, especially with your email, it's really hard to tell tone and stuff. So yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, like communication is everything. you got to make sure that you are open with your communication as well. Like I always tell our team members, like that's the number one thing, communication and making sure you do communicate with each other. Like that's going to be a huge, um, I don't know the right word, but like that's going to be something that does, help you and you know build that relationship so yeah if something was like didn't really fit in with what you were doing or just was didn't feel right I would be open with that in communication (laughs) you know like something (laughs) like that like be open with it like oh you know maybe pick out something that does look good like oh maybe 
Um, I really love the background of it, but the mm-hmm. font's just not really on brand and talk about mm-hmm. the brand, like saying why it's not, like looking at the parts of like, oh, it just doesn't really fit in right. with the actual brand of the book or or the, mm-hmm. your actual author brand, whatever it might be. And yeah, pick up some things like, oh, you did this really well, but this just needs to be tweaked a little bit. And it's just about the language that you use to give that feedback. I think that would be a huge thing. And yeah, with emails, some people take things obviously the wrong way because we read it Mm -hmm. in a different voice or tone to Mm -hmm. what you think. But I do really think that that would be the best bet of like, yeah, just picking up some things that you do like and then where it could be improved and just your language around that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I that's, think that's yeah. true. That is true. Yeah. Um, I have a question from the PA side. Like, how do you draw boundaries around your time? Because, you know, I I work, I did some PA work and um I would get calls at 10 o'clock at night and <laughs> I need this now. And you're like, I'm sorry, I'm in bed. And normally it wasn't that, but like we'd be at dinner. And we, you know, or something like that. And, um, and it was always something they needed almost immediately. And you're like, this is hard. How do you draw boundaries around your time? Yeah. And I think like with our clients at the Daring Press, we, on the onboarding thing, we have like an onboarding process and we are very clear of like, this is the hours that our team members are available within these hours. And it's literally work hours, like, unless Mm -hmm. the, um, team member likes working at night better but I think that's around setting those boundaries to begin with like okay these are the hours that I work I'm available within Mm -hmm. this time and we always put out we communicate within this app we use Asana for task management like Mm -hmm. being super Mm -hmm. clear from the get-go of like okay what are you using for communication how are you yeah talking are we doing monthly zoom meetings like Mm -hmm. really setting that expectation and boundaries from the start and the same with the client like put out your boundaries of like you know I only reply within these hours this is the type of thing and I always say nothing we're not in an industry where it's emergency we're not we're not right. saving lives here we're not, you know, we're not doing heart surgery or anything right yeah like there's going to be moments where things do come up that need to be urgently looked at and I think that normally yeah like it's not going to be every day like if there is things that come Mm -hmm. up and you do have to you know switch some things around to make Mm -hmm. that work like that's fine but as long as it's not every day or just Mm -hmm. really thinking about okay is this an actual emergency if it's to do with like a book release and something went out that was completely wrong or like that type Mm -hmm. of stuff Mm -hmm. up yeah yeah Yeah. that's probably a bit of an emergency that you need to Mm -hmm. tackle but I think it's around setting your boundaries from the start of when you're available and when you're not Mm -hmm. available and that can really set that pace to begin with and you're on the same page with that because you know. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think that's really smart. And a lot of people Mm -hmm. don't think about that Mm -hmm. in the beginning and have to set it later, which is probably harder. So yeah, Yeah. that's a hard hard conversation to have. It's better to have it up front when you don't know the person yet, really. (laughs) Well, I have one more question about from, well, this is an author and a uh, PA's kind of both, but do you guys, do most authors have you guys sign an NDA or um, is that something you guys run into? And do you recommend that? just for the protection of both people yeah definitely and we have um we have contracts done up in terms of um yeah uh, confidentiality and literally like it outlines your pay it outlines you know notice it outlines um hours it outlines literally everything like you've got to have your contracts you've got to have those type of things in place Mm -hmm. so that you both know what's expected you both know Mm -hmm. And you're both clear on all of, you both know right. what's happening and legally right. uh, signed off on that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. That's really smart. Yeah. 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 And then that it's all in smart. writing and there's no question. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, do you have anything, any commonalities you see in writers who have been doing, like been successful over the long haul? Cause you probably work with a lot of different genres and authors and stuff. 
Yeah. And I think the big thing is like sticking at it. Like, honestly, mm-hmm. I've had mm-hmm. so many conversations with authors and it's like people see and think that it's overnight success and it's not they're all like I've had 10 there's 10 years backing on this like (laughs) and that's the thing when you come into this author business like you've got to be in it for the for the hard yard and there's it's going to be hard it's not Mm -hmm. easy and you're going to have to adapt to the changing climate or climax of like literally um, things changing in the marketing world and things yeah. that were successful and that were easy five years ago are not easy now. It's forever changing. And I think yeah. the authors that do find success adapt, don't sit in this negative, oh, poor me, poor me, <laughs> Nothing. my mm-hmm. book's not selling. Why is it not selling? We'll do something right. about it. Like that. Yeah. I, I, it really annoys me when you see those. Po- it's like, you can't sit in that, like if you're in that negative, like, yeah, poor me, nothing's working, well, do something, like make it work, adapt that yeah. and try something else. You know, something that was working might not work right now and the only way to get over that is to try something else and put yourself mm-hmm. out there in a different way and learn, right. learn as much as you can and, right. yeah, you will get places if you've got that that motivation and that yeah and it's hard it's hard what should I give up and you see it a heap these days of authors giving up and that but if you go back to why you started this why you write why you're doing it you're gonna always find something that will help you grow and just hold on and be in it yeah yeah that's good That's good. Yeah, I think one of the most dangerous places an author can get is a place where you got a big old chip on your shoulder. (laughs) Like the whole industry is out to get me because nobody is buying my books. That's a bad place to be. Uh, Get out of there as soon as possible. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, I I think that's very good advice. Just, you know, stick with it. It's going to, the way it's going to change anyway. So, yeah, Yeah. you just have to keep going. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Well, is there anything else you feel like we should know about what you do or what your company does that we haven't asked you? Um, I think not really. Like if you are looking for okay. support, like, yeah, literally you can reach out to me. I always meet up, you know, do discovery calls and chat with our authors. And I'm pretty on it. Like I, you know, if you're not sure that you need support, like jump mm-hmm. on a call. Like I'm honestly, I won't tell you that you need support. If you don't yeah. need it, like that, you know, I'm not going to push you to, because it's a huge, it's a huge thing. And I know that being an author, you know, and mm-hmm. yeah, finding when is the right time. So if you want to have a chat about that, yeah, jump on, book a discovery call. I love, yeah, connecting with other authors and finding and helping them with what they sort of mm-hmm. need at that right time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you have a podcast too, right? So people could listen yeah. to the podcast, get some tips. So yeah. And what's the name yeah. of it? Yeah, the Daring Author podcast. So, yeah, I have guests on and, yeah, we chat about all things like how they found their success, what, you know, or like just having that really nice chat, like like I'm having with you guys, like I absolutely love jumping <laughs> on and just that natural chatting, you know, on yeah. something that we're both passionate about and, mm-hmm. yeah, how we can mm-hmm. grow and work together and collaborate. I think that's huge. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Well, this has been awesome. I've I've learned some stuff. I made some notes. And um, (laughs) so tell people where they can find out more about you and about your books and your uh, virtual assistant uh, business. Yeah, cool. So yeah, The Daring Press, you can find at thedaringpress.com. We're also on TikTok. We're on Instagram, Facebook, all of those type of things. And Mm -hmm. my author stuff, you can find um, on Amazon at Jenna Lee, and I've also got pen name Jenna Daring as well, which is more the dark romance side mm-hmm. of things. Yeah, all right. The more all daring right. things, yes. Yeah, I, that's my word. Like if you didn't know, and you don't know me, daring is my word. I love, I love it. it. I love it. Oh, that is great. We'll have all those links in the show notes. Thank you for coming today and talking to us about just virtual assistants and learning to kind of share some of our load with other people mm-hmm, <laughs> help us out. we appreciate mm-hmm, it mm-hmm. and yeah, um so welcome yeah so it's been great and thank you for coming today thanks for listening to everybody for listening 
And we'll have all the links at wish I'd known them podcast.com. Thanks to Alexa Barberg for editing and producing the podcast and to Adriel Wiggins for doing all the admin. Bye everybody. Yep. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to the wish I'd known them podcast. We hope this episode inspired you, empowered you, and made you laugh a little bit too. If you loved it, tell your friends about it. And if you feel so inclined, leave us a review. We look forward to being with you again next week.